How can people take their finances off the grid in a failing state? We speak to Magnus Heistek, the director of Rentist Wealth. Welcome, Magnus. Yes, thank you very much, Chris. Nice talking to you after so many years. You know, it's, it's a very good question. You know, the, the, the idea came about when people were talking about going off the grid in terms of the water and the electricity, of course. You know, if you can, you go off the grid, you put on solar panels and borals. And then I realized that the kind of advice I've been giving for a long time has actually been for you to go off the grid in terms of your finances. In other words, state proof or make your investments ANC proof so that the the policy decisions and the misgovernance of the country have the lowest possible impact on your investments as far as possible. And it is quite possible. You don't have to be extremely rich uh, to consider that. Even normal salaried people are now asking me, how do I build a portfolio that will look after me and my family with the least impact that the ANC might have on my investment returns. And, and quite simply, that's very doable. Even with small amounts of money, you can say, right, where do I invest where the, um, the, the, the misgovernance and misrule of the state has the lowest impact on the investment returns that I can make on my long-term investments? Well, first of all, let's look at something like, like um, your unit trust investments. Everybody or a lot of people have investments in unit trusts or in their retirement annuities or pension funds. Now, with a pension fund, there's very little you can do. That decision is taken out of your hand. And to a lesser extent, the same with retirement annuities. So that leaves you with your discretionary investments. In other words, that 500 or 1,000 or 5,000 rand a month that you put away, it's very, very important that you choose a fund where the underlying asset class is not linked to South Africa and companies are, that are being badly damaged by the ANC and, 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 and the poor economy. Let me give you an example of what not to invest in. would be, for instance, listed property. Now, listed property, we will drive past beautiful buildings like San City and Menlo Park and uh, Century City and the Cape, but that as an asset class has been extremely poor. You've made no money in the last 10 years that you put money into listed property. The returns have been zero. And that kind of reflects what's happening in the, the residential property market, but I'll come back to that in a second. So don't invest in listed property while what is going on is carries on going on. So you can have investments in South Africa with your RADs that are converted into offshore assets via what they call asset swaps. I know it's a technical term and full of jargon, but the fund management company, I'll give you an example of one, is like the Brentus Worldwide Flexible Fund. I'll take your money and everybody else's money. We'll take your rands. We convert it into dollars. We send it across. So you've actually invested in a global portfolio not linked to South Africa. That's been a superb place to put your money. And there are many, many asset swap funds in South Africa. So that's a starting point. The, this, the, the second... Uh, advice that I give people is while the ANC is in power especially the northern parts of the country, I'm saying to young people, even middle aged people even people at retirement, I'm saying forget about buying a property while the economy is being mismanaged. You won't make money because you haven't made money in the last 10 to 15 years. In fact the, 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 the residential property market barring the Western Cape been an absolute disaster. The media has gone very silent on just how badly the residential property market is doing. And I, I can see it in my own portfolio. I can see it with my clients, friends. Up north in Joburg or Pretoria, people talk about they simply cannot sell their property. And if they do sell it, it's at a vast discount to what it's actually worth. In fact, we're talking 30 to 40%. So very few people have made money in the property market in um, South Africa for, for the best part of about 10 years. And that's been one of the reasons why people are, are cash poor. They haven't got, they've got assets, they've got a house, they've got a bond, but the rates and taxes are eating up all the profits, the costs of buying and selling property. 
is is a major detriment. So I, I, I'm advising young people, and they, they thank me for that, simply rent. It's a renter's market. You're actually renting phenomenal properties for very, very cheap. Uh, but, of course, you get this resistance from certain groups. I know, but you have to buy a property and you don't have to pay a mortgage for someone else's mortgage. So that's rubbish because the returns have just been incredibly poor. You've made no money either owning your own property or with the, the, the so-called buy-to-let phase. That's dead and buried. So keep yourself independent. Travel lightly. Keep your cash under your control and not linked to the South African market. That's just an example of getting off the grid financially. What about people who own Western Cape property? Would it not be a good time for them now to sell because it's a buyer's market and invest some of that money? Yeah, it's a good it's a good point that you raise. People must become very careful of overextending themselves just because the property market mm. He's doing very well in the Cape. And I think at some point the Cape market will start cooling down. The prices there are just out of kilter to the reality. And it's also having an effect. A lot of people would like to move down to the Cape, but they, they simply say, I can't sell my property in north, first of all. And secondly, I can't afford to buy a property in the Western Cape. So one must be very careful. It depends when you bought and what, what your objectives are of speculating in the property market, but the property market in Cape Town is, is almost too hot, and one must be, be, be very aware of fantastic claims made by state agents and property marketers that this market can only go up. Markets can go down, and you know, as long as the DA is in charge of the Western Cape, I'm still fairly comfortable to, to recommend buying property in the Western Cape, but watch the dynamics and watch the demographic trends in South Africa, and then, of course, the crime trends in the Western Cape, which is which is a major negative. Make no doubt about it. Property prices are are good and solid, but the the, the, the crime situation in the Western Cape, in certain parts, really is is a major concern. So crime can 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 spoil this party. So be very careful about that as well. Now I know you're pro Mauritius when it comes to investments and and that including property. Um, tell us a little bit more about what is available there for people. You know, it's, it's purely by chance that I, I stumble onto Mauritius, and I'm not going to bore you, but uh, I just found it a very nice place to live, crime-free, gun-free, and, you know, very fiscally attractive to go and set up property structures or company structures. And that's what David Ansara from the Free Market Foundation mentioned in his speech. He said he recommends that South African business people consider Mauritius, but he could have recommended Guernsey or Isle of Man or whatever. But the principle is try and, and, and structure something away from South Africa in a perfectly legitimate manner to reduce your taxes. And he said, pay as little taxes as you can. Now, the Mauritian story has, has exploded over the last couple of years because of so many South Africans looking at a plan B for themselves and their families. The property is one way of securing residency on the island, but property on the island has become very expensive. You don't have to buy property to get permanent residency in Mauritius. You can do it via a retirement visa for anybody over 50. That's become very popular. So you simply apply for the permanent visa over 50, and you can come and go as much as you long, provided you bring onto the island $18,000 a year. But that's money that you can spend. It's not money that you have to invest or tie down. Property still is, is, is an avenue for wealthy people. And then if you do have assets abroad, um, to take David and Sarah's argument a bit further, move those assets into a trust in Mauritius. Again, putting further distance between your assets and an ANC government, which may or may not do funny stuff in the future with, with taxes and inheritance taxes, etc. So a lot of smart people have used the Mauritius as a base to structure their affairs, set up trusts, they've got residency on the island, they set up companies, they're paying 15% tax, if at all, and it's perfectly legitimate. So there's a very large and a very nice community of South Africans on the island. Some parts of the island where we, we, we have a little flat, 
they call, well, it's, 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 you know, Black River, they call it the Bura Manaka because there's so many Afrikaans speaking people there and South Africans. And, you know, so it's, 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 you actually don't feel like you're away from home. So, but the principle is very important. If it's possible, look at legal ways to structure your personal affairs that looks after yourself and your family. And forget about these pro patriotic arguments of, you know, we are better Rangers, we'll stay till the you know, till the end days, etc. I mean that 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 kind of story has fallen away. People realize how much damage the NEC has done to personal wealth. I mean the Rand has is, is an example that's dropped by fifty seven percent over the last ten years. Our property prices have been one of the worst in the year. And our stock market has been a very poor performer over fifteen years now. And and you know, if you look at the comparative returns local versus offshore, somebody took money offshore 10, 15 years ago is far better off than someone who did not take money offshore. Doesn't mean you want to immigrate. I mean I, I structured my affairs because I don't want to immigrate, but I don't want to become poor along with everybody else who you know, hangs on to their poor investments. When there are perfectly legitimate and, and legal avenues out there to do better. I was just going to say, SARS can reach into people's bank accounts anywhere in the world. So I would imagine that you would advise them to go about it with reputable financial advisors and ensure that all legal requirements are met. Yes, of course. You have got what they call the common reporting standards. Mm. And Mauritius will report. But if you do it legally, you can take out one million rand per year uh, without yeah. any questions. You and your wife or any member of 18, over 1 million you need to apply. So this is nothing is illegal about this. I mean, it's very difficult today to hide money in, in, the, in the greater scheme of things. It is just to get a better return on your capital should you decide to immigrate one day or maybe your children because that's a big factor, a great deal of, 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 of clients in our business and I would imagine for many in South Africa their kids are probably not going to stay in South Africa, which is a sad thing to say. They're heading off UK, Australia, Canada after they've studied. So it would be unwise for them to start building South African assets, uh, like retirement annuities or properties, pension funds, when there is a good chance that they might up and leave at the age of 25 or 30 or 35 with their assets stuck in South Africa. I mean, the, the, the laws have changed, but more difficult to get your money out of these investments in instruments. So it's 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 just unfortunately a reflection of the world that we live in. And our thinking about investment planning and estate planning needs to change because we live in a very uncertain environment. Uh, we have a government that is busy promulgating many, many laws, pushing it through parliament that could have an impact on, on your wealth, my wealth, anybody's wealth. And it would be absolutely foolish just to ignore it all and say, Well, I, I, I worry and I've been worried for a very long time. And you know, in our little business, we've, we've externalized a lot of our clients' assets totally legally. And they're very comfortable with it. And they still love South Africa. They still, they still scream for the Springboks and the wear the green jersey. But they are global citizens. They are really are global citizens. And I think that's the bottom line. Of, of what I've been recommending for quite a long time. Thank you. That was Magnus Heistek of Brentist Wealth speaking to Biz News on how to take your finances off the grid. Thank you, Magnus. Yes, thank you. Look forward to seeing you in, in Adam Magnus. <laughs>